one audience member is going to be joining us during the second act. And besides that, here we go. That's it. scarf over your face, your hat pulled low. It may be that a winter has passed since I saw you last, but did you think these obscurations would prevent me from recognizing your face? Heading to the Taurus Inn for early burn because I had would be understandable. I would have invited you. You weren't heading to the Taurus Inn early this morning. You were just leaving it. Your grief is your own math, you know, do I expect myself able to dissolve your anguish at your father's loss? But perhaps these months of leaving you alone to your grief have lasted over long. The mourning over my father's death became something of a national event, much to my surprise. The fact that he was the only architect of American birth to work on all those national projects was suddenly cause for notice, and this only on his deathbed. Of course, the government is always looking for its next national cause celebre, so President Arthur decided that it was him. When the newspapers declared him America's first architect, he was too far gone to even notice. When they asked me about his reaction, I told them he had drooled a little. After all the funeral hullabaloo finally died down, I went for a trip to Washington alone. I went to visit the Capitol building, his other son, more like him than I'll ever be. Tall, cold, magnificent, stone. It's based on the Parthenon. Do you know that? For decades now, the Peasants have been stealing little slabs here and there. They use it to make their toilets. All those gods vying for power, and in the end, Sterculius won. Sterculius, the god of feces. Every day, a thousand peasants shit on the Parthenon. <laughs> I've never heard of anything more perfect in my life. <laughs> I speak of my father to help you understand why I failed to reply to your letter about your father's loss. Fathers are broken things, broken sons of their broken fathers. I have no son, nor any wish to have one. But I will lift your broken body with my broken arms, and I will carry you. Perhaps, with some measure of grace, we will not consume each other utterly. Tower that he minus and planned their escape. <laughs> minus may control the land and the sea, but not the air. We will go airward. Search! We will fly away. Icarus fabricated a set of wings for himself and for his father. Flapped his wings and felt himself buoying upwards. He then equipped Icarus. Then, rising on his wings, he felt himself carried up and encouraged Icarus to follow. Icarus, exulting in his flight, soared upwards as he reached the blazing sun, the wax on his wings melted, and they began to come.
exalted in his flight? <laughs> That's not it, is it? I can tell by the wording you cut it. The missing, the redacted, it's here, isn't it? I know you cut this for the others, but why for me? You ask me what I want. The raw stuff of life. I want the thing itself, and not the story of the thing. You hand me these watered-down texts. I want to work properly, as you do, from the original text. I would never share my translations with anyone else. Only you. And if you happen to have some unvarnished translations set aside in your own Pandora's box, strictly in preparation for the anthology, I could read those too. To properly assist you. Curious T. D. Pure your salivio est, ne toto desis capisirano and qui i de jurius est lacilis. Your ass is like a salt cellar, nor do you defecate ten times in the whole year. When you do, it is harder than pebbles. Pedicavo ego us et irammo orilie patique. I will ass fuck and mouth fuck you, Aurelius, you sodomized ass pony. <laughs> Se domi menis manias pares nobis novum continuus cutisarium, but stay at home and prepare yourself for nine back-to-back -back fuckings. Nine. <laughs> Your handling of Achilles in the third verse, who could conquer the Trojans using his ever-ready fire sword was apt. But I believe I have the edge over your translation with my double entendre of Patroclus exchanging his master's thrusts. <laughs> You'll find Achilles and Patroclus are merely the tip of the sword, if you will. <laughs> the sheer volume of men exchanging thrusts truly boggles the mind. And gods. And men and gods. And women. Zeus, the thunderbearer, exchanging thrusts with a shepherd boy. The homosexual condition was so rampant among the Greeks, it wasn't merely tolerated, it was honored. Hercules. Where do you find out about Hercules? Well, telling these stories. Telling these stories in their full form, complete. And untouched, usually is everything I can do not to think about all the parts of the story that I am omitting. But telling a story like this, totally untouched, it is not the stories or the characters that I see in my mind's eye. I see Ovid himself sitting there, telling me the story, fashioning it. Uh, I will need to see more translations soon beyond 
the Icarus. Soon after returning to the academic council to request more funding, they are reticent. Despite the entreaties of Dr. Gildersleeve, my colleague, who you may remember from that first lecture on Theses and Minotaur, which brings me to another odd point of memory about that first lecture that you attended. He didn't. It was a large enough crowd, but I knew them all. 34 of my students, I couldn't possibly mistake those, and precisely five others. Dr. Gildersleeve, uh, whom I mentioned, and his lady companion, Mrs. Denby from the church, Mrs. Milroy from my father's firm, and the mustachioed gentleman whom you aren't. I remember greeting each as they came in. I was discouraged by the poor attendance from the public. The, the mustachioed gentleman, Mr. Fitzgerald or Fitz Henry Fitz something anyway, he was remarkable to me as the only man in the room that I didn't know. Oh, I'm glad you heard it, however you managed it. Before we began this work, I was mostly asleep, most of the time. What? Simply sharing. Simply sharing these texts has been a kind of unburden. I am going to do one more pass over your unedited Icarus translation, but I will need to see more soon. In order that you be safe, the, uh, the subjunctive purpose of sense to me at all. That's why I can't get it right. Daedalus says that if you fly too high, the wax will melt, which it does. How does this make sense at all in the story of a human who is flying? A human leaving all the things of humans, breaking from the clay that made him, taking a wing like a god himself. He can fly, he just can't fly quite so high. Does that make any sense to you? Actually, nor do I find any sense in your interpretation of the Achilles Patroclus myth exchanging thrusts, you say. But the word is chattel, is it not? They didn't exchange thrusts, he received them. Patroclus received Achilles. There was no exchanging. And I'm not being pedantic here. This speaks to a larger conception in the Roman mind. Ganymede was a cup bearer. So he was the receptive, the receptacle, so when Zeus poured out his ambrosia, he caught it. <laughs> There's no talk of Zeus bearing Ganymede's cup. Perhaps it is the same thing with Hermaphroditus. The Romans weren't concerned about the sex of your partner, merely the submission of the one doing the cup bearing and the domination of the one spilling the ambrosia. It was about power and pleasure, not man or woman. We have failed to grasp this entirely. I, I had not thought of that. How could we do anything but fail? We, we argue and debate, we pontificate and explain, we, we debate and counter-debate, we, we split hairs and then argue over who got the larger strand. The Romans did not of that, they lived and through with wandering of what, of what the thing itself and not the story of the thing, like your tutor at Exeter, with his hands, fashioning the stories with his fingers. We could do that. We could use our hands. I think about that. I mean, in the way of Bethesian, taking up these stories with our bodies in their steads, in which case, yes, yes, I believe I could, yes, I can see it, the blood flowing up our spines and then soaking the pages, yes, 
the, 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 the rituals and the right stuff, the playing and the posturing. We will eat the heart out of these gods and remake their deeds. Yes, we can use our hand. We can begin with your latest work. Find a new way forward. Was it not? Psyche, Psyche's sisters told her that her new husband was horrifically ugly, was a monster, and she could not bear to look at him unless she was blindfolded. Psyche did not know that it was Cupid who would come for her late at night if she waited. He gave her a blindfold, one peak, and it would all be over. Psyche. sympathetic to the difficulties concerning your father, but there's only so many. I was able to pull together some, some broad edits of your translation, the work that I had asked of you to do since the winter, so that I can give something to the council. Thank God they don't actually read this stuff. Thank God for Gildersleeve. Give me a good argument of, of arguing for yet another extension for the, but there's only so Satisfaction, I am forever suspended. I am forever waiting. I know that you come in every night. I know that you watch me every night. I can't tell when you leave. I'm
their greatness through the path of suffering. Did you think that it would be different for you? Big man. Pygmalion was a sculptor who fell in love with his creation. He caressed it and gave it a present, beads of amber. The necklace became her, but she looked not less lovely than when she was unattired. I saw you there. Not a hint of shame on your face, not even a, a, a hint of it. A four-horse cab, the best in Boston, sailing around the public garden in midday with Dr. Gildersleeve. What have you told him? What has he read? Four horses! Four horses! I, I haven't had a proper meal in weeks. My coat is threadbare and my senses are not any that. How could you afford a cab at all, much less four horses? I shook all night. Did you like that? A marble that trembles? Your hands? I don't know how you learned so many beads. What did you tell the other Steve? What does he know? No more. Not one night more. I don't care who I play or your hands. I don't care what. I curse that first lecture that you attended. Didn't attend. I don't know how many lies since, but this was the first. What did you tell the other sleeve? I will gut you! I will rip you to shreds if you've told them anything! I'll... Metamorphosis you wanted and metamorphosis you got. I am filth! My credit is worthless, my work is senseless. My name is hardly whispered about among decent folk. I have offered you no unkindness that any devoted tutor would not also share. I have offered you my, my home, my possessions, my flesh. You still seem to sense some corner of me that is unconquered, some part of me that has yet to yield. Terminable nights, you were waiting for me for my final surrender. I want to be lost among your hits. I would be your dog, your rat, your shadow, the air that you breathe even once. I will be. Hearing your name for the first time. 
first time. This many years, I hear Matthew, and still, inside, I turn around and look. But if I hear hermaphroditus, I turn and look. I can't help it. I am glad that you like my Hermes. He's fond of you. He likes to watch. Mr. Gildersleeve is more fond of my Aphrodite, so that's who he gets. On a carriage ride in the park, in the back room, or perhaps attending a lecture on a topic that touched both of us very deeply. I didn't lie to you, Thomas. You wouldn't have recognized me hanging off of his arm like that, but I was at that lecture. So perhaps now you know something more of me as we have always known about you. The speeches to council about the sodomites and the terror of the molly houses, the petitions, the pleas for the police to have more raids and laws. Do you know what happens to a man who is imprisoned for sodomy, Thomas? A minotaur would at least have the decency to kill you in the end. So when you frothed and babbled that we should all go back to the pit, the thing that I didn't know about was the pit. So after my father's passing, I went to the Molly house, the tourist thing, of course. I went to the very bottom. I found another world. I found my people. I learned many things. Your confession was nothing, Thomas. We knew you of old. We know our kind by their unkind. I didn't enjoy torturing you, Thomas. But I knew that if I just asked you to come with me, you could never make it. You could only come through the path of suffering. I came to offer you your candle. I have prepared the way. All you have to do is be born. Thank you.